Hey, what's up my peeps and peepettes? This is your King Reds Power here at the reviewing station for what is probably going to be the final video review of the brand new just released the Bond Power Rangers movie action figures based into the 6.5 inch Legacy Collection. So anyway, with that said, if you didn't know who this is by the appearance, it is the brand new take on Alpha 5 from the movie. So before we take a look at the action figure in hand, let's put him aside for a moment and take a quick look at the packaging as per take of every single video review when I can. And uh, this packaging doesn't want to stand up too well considering that the bottom portion is a bit warped and that's unfortunate so I'm going to have to lean it back. But I'll raise the camera so you can get a good look at it anyway. And basically it is your standard of every single 6.5 inch action figure to come out of this sub-series. So we got Saban's Power Rangers up here, the build a Megazord which is showcasing the movie Megazord, and then we got the Red Ranger on Alpha 5's packaging because I have no idea. We've also got the Toys R Us exclusive sticker there onto the back of the packaging. And here we have a nice look at the build a Megazord all built up with all the Rangers showcasing every single bit of pieces that they come with to build this said Megazord, including Alpha 5, which I won't forget. And then we've got also down here showcasing the Rangers to come in this series and Alpha 5 again. So there you have that if that wasn't enough. So that's it for the packaging. Let's go ahead and bring back in Alpha 5 now. And get him to stand up, which can be a little bit of a hassle, at least on my figure, because there is a little bit of some QC issue. And it's just basically that the uh, joints to his feet and his hands are a bit loose, but not to the point where they're going to fall off. Just to the point where he really doesn't stand up or keep a pose too well. So that's only the one big gripe that I got against this figure. But having said that... This figure is an overall win. I mean, I'm very impressed with what is going on here with this action figure. He looks good. He definitely looks like an upscaled version of the 5-inch action figure with an additional points of some articulation here at the hands and the feet. And, of course, we got a ball joint system here at the legs. I'm not so sure if the 5-inch action figure had that, but speaking of the articulation... I'll get into that in just a moment. I just want you to see the back as well. Some nice detail going on here. Would have been nice if some of this was actually black washed to bring out the detail because this is some really nice work. And I really do like this design of Alpha 5. And I definitely have grown on to his beer belly. I really think that is a top hitter there for this actual design. This is a really, really cool Alpha 5. I, I'm just going to miss the... Uh, the little light pattern that he had going on for the uh, television series where he had this one beam of light going across back and forth like this here in this area. It's kind of there, but it, there's no detail going on there. So yeah, whatever, it, it's a nice touch. It's an Easter egg. Let's put it that way. So uh, yeah, nice metallic paint job here on this uh, dome bit, which is pretty cool. Nice gold for the eyes, or as I call them, floodlights, but hey, <laughs> that's the only real drawback I had against this design, but it's grown on me, so yeah, he's a win overall. So anyway, let's go ahead and do this articulation. He's got a ball-jointed neck. I was not expecting that. I was expecting a swivel cut like all the other 6.5-inch Legacy action figures, but hey, this could be a step in the right direction. This could be a trial here that Bandai's trying, maybe. So I'd love to put my rangers in some inquisitive poses, if possible, in the future. Bandai, you got something here. Anyway, he also has a bit of a swivel cut here at the next section, but unfortunately, I don't really think this is supposed to really move here because it does get tight. So if you go about moving this too much, you might stress it out and you might actually rip the neck off. So be forewarned. Anyway, back to the articulation. We got shoulder joints. Nice ball jointed section here. Um, feels like it's on a ratchet system, but it's kind of loose. Not to the point where it's moving on its own, but uh, there's just no feel of ratchets going on there. Uh, we also have single jointed elbows, which, you know, for this character, I can let it slide. We've got uh, what is actually a swivel cut for the wrist, but it kind of works like a ball joint in a way, but it's not a ball joint. Never mind, it is a ball joint. Um, there's nothing at the uh, torso because it's all one single bit of plastic. 
Uh, we do have ball jointed legs, as I mentioned before, so you can actually get them to go around a complete 360, which is very interesting. You do have a swivel cut as well. Uh, th there's really no inward and outward movement. I'm just going to show off. This is about as far as you get, but that's why I kind of wanted to skip that. Anyway, we do have single hinged um, knee joints, so... You know, again, for this character, it, it works in its own way. And then I guess you could say we got ball-jointed feet. Yes, they are ball-jointed. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that would explain why I have some trouble with getting this figure to stand up pretty good. Because uh, it just gives out and he wants to fall over very easily. Now, sometimes he'll stand up just fine like he's doing right now. But after a while, face forward or he's on his back, he just does not hold his position. Even for a straight pose, he won't hold it for so long. That's basically it. There's not much else to really say about Alpha 5 because he really doesn't come with any weapons. I mean, I wouldn't expect that anyway. He does come with an accessory because he is a part of the Build a Megazord series. And that brings me into the next figure at hand, which is the Megazord. And here it is, fully completed. Alpha 5 comes with the upper torso and the head for the said Megazord here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Megazord here before we cut off this review because... This is the whole reason why you're buying into this set. It's not the Rangers, it's not Alpha 5, it's the Megazord. And, you know, it's not the best. I say Alpha 5 is the better figure out of this series, but what this has to offer is pretty good. The paint job is decent. Um, I, I like the sculpting of this design. I, it's really grown on me. I really like the way this Megazord looks. I can let it slide that it doesn't have a faceplate or eyes. I like the visor. I like that metallic sheen going on for it. Very cool. A nice addition to paint applications on this thing. So you're getting your money's worth here in the Build a Megazord thing. But uh, it, it is kind of unfortunate that it doesn't have any of the included real articulation like all the other Build a Megazords out of this series. There's no wrist swivels. There's no ball jointed knees or ball jointed feet, which means these are a swivel cut and a hinge joint and it kind of limits the movement and the posing that you can get out of this megazord but what it has to offer is just its appearance and the way it looks on your display shelf and it looks good i really do like this but uh outside of its looks there's not much else going on i'll go ahead through the articulation we do not have a ball joint at the head making this the first building megazord out of this series to have a swivel cut at the head we do have ball jointed shoulders and you do get a lot of play out of them but due to the wings being applied back here you're not going to get a full rotation you do get a little inward and outward movement so it kind of works like a butterfly joint so i did mention that before in one of these videos you got a single hinge elbow joint, which is per take of every single build a Megazord, so that's no different. No waist swivel, nothing going on at the torso. It's all one single sculpt. You got ball jointed legs. You get this much forward. You get this much back, which is more than the Rangers themselves. Uh, you do have a little bit of inward and outward play, but it's limited because of these thigh pieces here. And then we've got a... Uh, the single hinge knee joints which I did mention before and then there's a swivel cut at the feet and there's some nice detail going on at the feet so it's fully detailed it's got its fair play of articulation but don't be expecting to get this in many poses because it's just not possible at this okay, point okay so this is going to be the final look at the size comparisons between all the figures to come out of this 6.5 inch sub legacy series and I gotta say this is a really nice set. I do have my problems with it, but it's nothing that really puts me at, away from wanting to obtain these figures. They are a nice addition to your legacy collection. They will definitely stand out because they are not your common spandex suit, super muscular Power Ranger figures. These are about as close to accurate as you can get when it comes to Bandai America because knowing this company and the way that they like to make superhero designs out of their male and female action figures, this, and going by the comparisons of the actual movie counterparts, is extremely as accurate as it can get from a toy company. It's the standout point of this series because it looks so cool. It's so unique. It's different. I love different. Different makes the world go around to me. And basically, this could be one of the best legacy figure sub-series to come out of this whole entire series. But, uh... There are some things that I really wish Bandai of America did not skip, but uh, I can let it slide, at least for this line. Hopefully it won't happen again. Hopefully we'll never see 
uh, male ranger figures be excluded of the swivel cut at the bicep section ever again. So if you have any questions or comments about this series, you know what to do. Hit it down below in the comment section of the video. I'll answer you when I got time. If you enjoyed this review series, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But either way, I'm still getting notified by YouTube, so it counts. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see other video reviews similar to the one you're seeing here today. Whether that's elongated or concise, because I've got other plans in the future. And I will be going back to the concise reviews very shortly. So until then, this is your Keen Redis Power signing off saying Thank you very much for watching this and I will see you whenever you see me.